Welcome back everyone to the 1320 edition of the best solo carries where we provide you guys with three champions for each role that are extremely powerful for the current meta. If your main goal in mind is climbing the ranks as quick as possible then putting the time in to learn these champions will be well worth it right now. But before we get into it be sure to check out skill capped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work and if it doesn't work for you you shouldn't pay learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below kicking it off in the top lane the very first champion on the list is Aatrox Aatrox has been an absolute stud of a top lane pick over the last couple of patches due to the emergence of a new core build gore with Shojin is just so lethal on the champion right now and has you almost playing earth mode with how low a cooldown his Q drops to in the mid game with Duskblade nerfed here in 13.20 it's really going to pave the way for this bruiser build to take over as Aatrox is number one setup in the majority of games. Where Aatrox is really going to come online is once he gets his Q maxed out at level 9. Cooldown of spell drops from 14 seconds at rank 1 all the way down to 6 seconds at rank 5, so it's just such a massive spike to play around. Although the champion can solo kill in specific matchups, it's really playing for the level 9, not forcing any 50-50 plays prior to that, and taking over from then on out, which will make you very consistent on Aatrox. Since Aatrox is so reliant on landing his skill shot Q for maximum damage output, banning a champion who can more easily avoid the spell like Fiora or Aurelia is a good idea. Rune page you should be running on Aatrox is Conqueror with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, followed by Second Wind and Revitalize for secondaries. With Quinn nerfed here in 13.20, taking her spot and back in the top three for top lane is going to be Garen. Garen is a very consistently strong top lane pick for the majority of ranks right now, as his matchups are solid, and he's only become better in recent patches due to his core items seeing buffs. Garen is winning into the likes of Renekton, Jax, Yone, and Gangplank at very high rates right now, and they are all being picked a ton in meta. Ranged top lane picks are going to be of most trouble for Garen, so if you ban out Quinn and then just dodge other niche ranged matchups like Vayne, you should have no issues racking up the wins on Garen. Although this is quite common knowledge for high elo Garen players, over 45% of low elo Garens are just building him incorrectly. Tier 2 boots on Garen should always be Berserker's Greaves, but for some reason Steel Caps and Mercs are picked way more often in gold than below. You want Greaves every game because of how well Garen scales with attack speed. You get one extra spin with Garen's E per 25% bonus attack speed, which makes the value of Berserkers really good. The wrist build of going double zeal also synergizes really well with Garen E, while providing him with a ton of bonus movement speed at the same time. Really great mid-game spike out of this build, and especially on Holebreaker completion, if you're even or ahead of the curve, very few champs can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you in the 1v1. The rune page for Garen is Phase Rush, followed by Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Gathering Storm. Optimal secondaries include Conditioning and Overgrowth. If climbing the ranks as fast as possible is what you're looking to achieve right now and you enjoy playing top lane, Malphite needs to be in your champion pool. There's just no better top lane champ when it comes down to making a consistent impact each and every game. For someone with such amazing teamfight presence, the laning power of Malphite is actually quite good into a lot of AD fighters and you can really nullify a bunch of meta picks by the click of one spell. Malphite E being the attack speed reducer allows him to excel into champs like Trindamir, Yone, Jax, and Aurelia. It's just the first couple of levels where you need to make sure you don't give anything up. Once you complete an early Bramble Vest into those AD fighters, there's really nothing they can do, so not risking any 50-50 fights prior to then is key. You really want to avoid AP top lane matchups at all costs, so using your ban on Silas or Mordekaiser is what we'd advise. Being able to stack armor is just so important on Malphite, so if you do run into a game where the enemy comp is very heavy AP, it's really not a bad idea to use a dodge. The full build for Malphite is an Iceborne Gauntlet Rush into Sunfire Aegis second, and a Situational Tank Item third. You should have two rune pages ready to go for Malphite, a Grasp page, which is going to serve you best in into other AD fighters, and a Comet page that will be of best value into ranged matchups, or if you are less certain, you can trade autos with the enemy melee champ in the 1v1. Making her very first appearance on the solo carry list for jungle, and arguably one of the best junglers in the entire game, is Briar. The skirmish power of Briar is completely nuts, and if you let her get ahead, there is virtually no coming back. The amount of consistent DPS Briar can deal while being able to heal for a mass amount at the same time thanks to her W is what makes Briar so lethal. The long range catch potential from Briar's ultimate is such a luxury of a tool for solo queue as well. Your team will always be wanting to take random fights without you, and being able to quickly join a fight with Briar R is extremely powerful. Comps that have strong kiting power are who Briar will struggle against the most, so banning out someone like Rakan is a good idea. A quick tip for the rune setup on Briar that many players are messing up on revolves around running overheal in place of triumph. Over 80% of low elo Briar players are taking triumph, but in challenger that number drops to only 50%. Overheal is so undervalued on Briar right now, and works extremely well with her kit 
due to all the healing she has built in. If you guys remember a few patches back, Overheal actually got an adjustment to where the shield now scales off your max health, and since Briar's Bruiser build has a ton of health, you get crazy good value out of running the rune. Speaking of Briar's builds, the one you should be running for the vast majority of your games consists of Gore Drinker or Stridebreaker into Black Cleaver second, and Steric's third with Conqueror for the Keystone rune. Now there is the crit build with Hail of Blades, which can work great into squishier comps, but we would only recommend using this after you put a lot of time into Bruiser and can win with that first. If you just want a jungler who you can pick up and see results with fairly quickly, Jarvan is the play for 13.20. The mid-game spike that Jarvan has right now is absolutely ludicrous, as his EQ combo drops to such a short cooldown on Shoujin completion. There's simply nothing better than Gore into Shoujin for your first two items, while Frozen Heart tends to work best third, but it can be swapped around based on the game. When picking Jarvan, it's ideal the enemy comp doesn't have an insane amount of mobility that they can easily avoid your ultimate, so banning out highly mobile meta champs like Ezreal or Rakan is good value. For a jungler like Jarvan, who has a ton of early game threat, it's imperative you map out a game plan in loading screen. For a general rule of thumb, try to path towards the lane that will provide you with the best gank setup to give you the best opportunity at snowballing early on. We have a bunch of jungle courses that go into heavy detail as to how you can win with early game junglers and execute on your game plans, which can be found on our website. The rune page that you should be running on Jarvan is Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Roll with Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. A jungler who continues to become more popular with each and every patch and a phenomenal solo carry for 13.20 is Nocturne. High elo Nocturne players are really loving the Spear of Shoujin on him, and with Stridebreaker, you have a very durable yet offensive build at the same time. Noc is definitely the pick we would recommend you lean more towards if you are in the lower ranks right now. You've got a very cut and dry power spike being the level 6, and it gives you an actionable win condition to play for every single game, especially in the jungle where there can be a ton of variants. Less is often more, and with Nocturne, farming efficiently to that level 6 and looking to be proactive whenever R is up is an easy way to find lots of success. Being able to freely dive onto enemy carries without getting CC'd is key to winning with Nocturne, so using your ban on a meta peel champion like Rakan or Lulu is a good idea. The standard keystone rune for Nocturne is Lethal Tempo with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Best secondaries are Eyeball Collection and Ultimate Hunter. Moving on to the solo carry mid lane champs, a new addition to the top 3 for 13.20 is Silas. Silas has been on the rise in recent patches due to his mana buff from 13.16, along with many indirect changes going in his favor. 13.20 sees Zed being nerfed, and that is Silas's most common matchup for solo queue. It's also a matchup that Silas absolutely feasts in, winning over 54% of the time. There's really just one meta mid lane champ that gives Silas a ton of trouble right now, and that champ is Vex, so she's a no brainer for your ban if you intend on locking in Silas. The first few levels with Silas can be a bit difficult in certain matchups since his abilities are on quite long cooldowns early on. It's the level 9 where you can really begin taking over with the champion, as the base cooldown on W drops to 6 seconds, which makes his skirmish super nuts. If you opt for the Night Harvester build, run Lucidity Boots and take Transcendence in runes, you'll have 55 haste at around this point. This means W drops to a 4 second cooldown, which is pretty insane. To really get the most out of Silas, we have a dedicated Master and Minutes course for the champion on our website detailing everything you need to know from the basics to advanced tricks. The complete core build for Silas is a Night Harvester rush into Shadow Flame second and Zhonya's third. With Night Harvester, you're playing for a bit more upfront burst than Everfrost, so opting for Electrocute instead of Conqueror works extremely well. Now that the dust has settled and Riot has stopped tinkering with Nefiri, she's slotting in as an extremely powerful carry. Nefiri offers a ton of strength for solo queue specifically, because her catch power against uncoordinated teams is incredibly strong. Zed is actually one of the few meta matchups that Nefiri had a negative win rate against in 13.19, so Zed being nerfed here this patch is great for her. One champion that can nullify Nefiri quite well by easily locking her down if she tries to dive in is Lissandra, so it's a pretty good ban if you are set on picking Nefiri. Flanking is going to be your bread and butter on Nefiri to single out those squishy carries. It's very difficult to play straight up 5v5 fights with the champion because her engage is very telegraphed, so lurking in the fog of war and trying to enter fights from the side or from behind the enemy team is key. The optimal core build for Nefiri is a huge reason to why the champ is so powerful, as she runs an Eclipse Rush into Black Cleaver second for the two item core. Durability, armor, pen, burst, consistent DPS, what more can you ask for as this build offers a bit of everything. As for the rune page, it's first strike with free boots, biscuits, and cosmic insight, followed by sudden impact and treasure hunter for secondaries. The best solo carry mid for the fourth patch in a row now is Vex. Vex has ever so slightly seen a dip in power as of recent due to the Syndra and Orianna buffs, but if you can use your ban on one of them, then you're in good shape. It's really just the longer range mages that are of most difficulty for Vex, as she is relatively shorter ranged, at least prior to hitting level 6. Big reason to why Vex is so powerful for solo queue is due to her ability to hard counter the popular melee mids. Silas, Yasuo, Yone, and Akali are super free for her, and they are all played at very high rates. In lane with Vex, and especially in 
melee matchups, it's all about playing off your passive and W cooldowns. When you've got your fear ready, you can play so aggressive and look to easily deny the enemy's CS. If they try to walk up, you can use E to either zone them off from missing the farm or get free damage off if they don't back away. This is extremely important on cannon waves. Don't waste your fear prior to that cannon minion dropping low as you should be looking to trade aggressively when it's in CS range for the enemy to either make them miss it or get a huge chunk of damage off. The core build for Vex is Illudin's Rush into Shadow Flame second and Zanya's or Rabadon's third. The best rune page is Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter. Mana Flow and Transcendence are the optimal secondaries. Receiving a massive buff for 13.20 and the first solo carry selection down in the bot lane is Ziggs. Ziggs Q radius is being increased from 150 up to 180, which will make landing poke much more consistent. After all, the most difficult part about Ziggs is hitting Q on a consistent basis, so the fact it's becoming easier is a big buff to the champ. When you're playing Ziggs bot lane, it's imperative you're using teleport to your advantage. Something way more players should be doing is starting the game off with mana crystal and refillable potion. This lets you cheat Lost Chapter by super fast, and by running the teleport, when you have enough gold for Lost Chapter, you can just base and then come straight back to lane with a massive advantage on the enemy ADC. Ziggs is really only vulnerable into heavy engaged supports, so using your ban on Rakan or Nautilus is good value. Core build for Ziggs is Leandri's Rush into Shadow Flame second and Rabadon's third. Run Comet for the Keystone Rune with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch, followed by Free Boots and Biscuits for secondaries. For our second solo carry ADC of the patch, it's going to be Jin. Jin was not only directly buffed last patch, but his staple rush item in Storm Razor was also buffed the patch before, which has propelled him to the top of the solo queue meta. Something very important that you should get in the habit of doing on Jin is not leveling up an ability until you get to lane, especially if your team is looking to invade. Sometimes taking that W at level 1 is going to be of way more value than Q. So many players just autopilot level up an ability as soon as they get into game, but especially on the likes of Jin, you really want to break that habit. Of course, if nothing happens to level 1 and you just go to lane, then at that point, leveling up Q is completely valid. Ban-wise for Jin, it's never a bad idea to get rid of a meta dive champion like Jarvan or Rakan, as it makes playing fights so much easier when you don't have to worry about getting dove on from two screens away. Build for Jin is a Storm Razor Rush and a Gale Force second and Rapid Fire Cannon third. Fleet Footwork is the Keystone Rune with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. The optimal secondaries are Celerity and Gathering Storm. With many champs buffed down in the bot lane as of recent, Ash continues to hold on to the final solo carry slot by a thread. To get the most out of Ash, it's vital you're looking to get the push advantage in lane. If you're forced to leash and the enemy reaches the wave well before you, it's more difficult to execute on this, but if you don't have to leash, it should be super free. Ash is the range advantage on the majority of ADCs, and especially with Kai'Sa being the most played ADC in meta, you can really abuse her lack of range early on. W poke is so powerful if the enemy ADC is hemmed under tower, as you either deny them farm if they stay out of range, or you tag them with poke if they want to CS. Pushing in lane is relatively safe with an ADC like Ash, because your E allows you to spot out where the enemy jungler is pathing, so you should really never die to ganks. A few good bans for Ash right now include Jarvan and Rakan, as their hard engage is difficult for Ash to play around. Build for Ash is a Kraken Slayer rush into Trinity Force second and Hurricane third. Grab Lethal Tempo for the Keystone Rune, with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Biscuits and Approach Velocity are for secondaries. With the ADC meta seeing a big shift toward these longer range champs like Ezreal, Jin, Caitlyn, and Ash, it's a great time to have Zareth in your champion pool for support. Landing your poke with Zareth is way more rewarding if you've got an ADC who has some long range follow up to help you finish off those kills, so the meta is perfect for him. Zareth in general is a great solo carry support as well because he's a bit less reliant on his team due to the fact he builds like a mage and can output his fair share of damage. To really excel with Zareth, keeping track of your low health minions is key. The reason we say this is because you only want to be throwing out your skill shots when the enemy ADC is going for last hits. Since the enemy is forced into a fixed position when last hitting, it makes lining up a W into Q combo much more easy. Just throwing Q out at random is something you want to avoid early on because it's much less guaranteed to land. Zareth being a squishy mage is more vulnerable into champs with strong catch power, so Blitzcrank is a good ban. The build for Zareth is Illudin's Rush into Shadow Flame second and Rabadon's third. Roll with First Strike for the Keystone Rune, followed by Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Mana Flow and Scorch are the way to go for secondaries. Another support who fits into the current landscape of the solo queue meta extremely well is Zyra. Just like Zareth, Zyra is great with any ADC you can follow up from longer range, as her all-in combo at level 6 chunks super hard, and oftentimes you just need one added auto attack or spell from your ADC to secure kills. Ezreal, Kate, Jin, and Ash are four of the five most played ADCs in solo queue right now, which is huge to really enable Zyra. Supports who can pick you off in an instant are who Zyra can struggle against the most, so banning Rakan or Blitz is good value. In the mid to late game with Zyra, really zone in on objective timers and setting up around objectives well before they spawn. Zyra thrives in those choke point entrances to Dragon and Baron, as her ultimate can cover a ton of ground, so picking off enemies as they try to face check into you will at the very least give you free poke, and at best have you picking up kills. The 
build to run on Zyra is Leandri's Rush into Rylai's second and Demonic Embrace or Zanya's third. Rune Page is Comet with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Pick up Taste of Blood and Relentless Hunter for secondaries. To round out the solo carries for support, back in the top three for yet another patch is Blitzcrank. Blitz has been loving life on top of the solo queue meta ever since his buffs from 13.17. A bit of an underrated reason to why Blitz can work so well for solo queue right now is that we see very few tanks on top of the meta. Not having to pick and choose who you hook and just being able to freely hook whoever you see out of position is a really nice luxury for Blitz. The only tank with a top 10 play rate for top lane or jungle right now is Malphite, and everyone else is just bruisers or assassins. With the Everfrost build on Blitz making its way into meta, capitalizing on hook plays is easier than it's ever been. Blitz has respectable AP ratios with his Q at 120% and R at 100%, so the AP from Everfrost does not go to waste either. With Moby Boots and W active, you can even just run right up to the enemy, root them with Everfrost, knock them up with E, and then follow with Q. You don't even have to lead with Q a lot of the time when you have the Everfrost on Blitz, which makes him way more consistent. With Ezreal being picked up quite a lot by ADC players from 13.20, he's a good band to consider when locking Blitz. Rune Page for Blitz is Glacial Augment with Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Grab Bone Plating and Unflinching for secondaries. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skill Capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it guys, the best solo carries for every role in patch 13.20. Thanks so much for watching, good luck with your rank climbs, and we'll see you back soon.